Welcome to Robot in Three Days. My name is Gabriel. I'm Barry. And we're here to give you a one week analysis of all the teams that participated in Robot in Three Days Challenge. There are many teams out there sharing information on Open Alliance. It's on Chief Delphi. We're going to put a link in the description. Uh, go check out what other teams are sharing with you so that way you can pull information in for your meetings. All right, let's get to it. One of the questions we had at the start of kickoff was should a rookie team try to focus on just cubes or just cones? Well, what we found from prototyping this week is that there are plenty of robots that are successfully able to do either and both. Check out this video from Pride of the North. They use a linear actuator gripper that can easily adjust for either cones or cubes. Cranberry Alarm used a similar mechanism. It's a horizontal linear slinear for compression that can also grab both cones and cubes. For claw style pinchers, we also have NDSU, FAMNM, as well as Ontario Tech with comparable arm mechanisms. All of them vary based on the type of pincher that's used, whether it's a compliance wheel or foam to pinch the actual objects for the game elements. There are many robot examples out there using wheeled intakes. We bet you have already tried prototyping some. Here's Zookeepers using a wheeled intake, also with a pneumatic grabber. And if you look at team FTC10136, they have a mechanism that's used to auto flip a cone from a slanted or fallen down position to an upright position for collection. We haven't seen this yet on many of the prototyped FRC robots, uh, but Cranberry Alarm did prototype some. They had a grabber that picked up cubes very well, uh, but they're also practicing with it to see if they can make a fallen cone uprighted with the same mechanism. And for Team Redux, they were able to demonstrate passing game pieces between another robot. And this is going to be critical for helping maneuver game pieces throughout the field. Especially for those rookie teams, uh, if you don't have the resources to manipulate them from the ground and into a scoring position, building a robot simply designed to carry pieces over to another one of your alliance partners might be a really great idea. Now when it comes to indexing, that means moving the game pieces within the actual robot. This is something we have not yet seen often in Robot in 3 Days. This is critical because if for some reason a game element gets jammed inside the robot, you're not able to deliver it, you're effectively out of the game. So we want to see more proto prototyping as a result of this. This is what we affectionately call the secret sauce for a robot design this year. Pull some inspiration from an industrial design on the highway. Here's an example of how they take a cone that's fallen over upright and deliver it back uh, into the back of a pickup truck. Panthabots saw this and they came up with an interesting mechanism that passively is able to run over a cone and then upright it inside their robot without it using any motors. Probably could use some prototyping. Would love to see how this works on a competition robot. Bison Robotics have an effective way of self writing cones. They use compliance wheels on a pivot. So the weight, which is generally on the very bottom of a cone, is when it's lifted off the ground, will self write in an upright position. Spectrum made a attempt to try to see what it would be like to drive around their old robot, which was a shooting robot. So they sucked up their cube and tried shooting it into the goal. And they were pretty successful at it. Uh, but what they discovered was that, as they said on Open Alliance, sharp make cubes sad. Are making a shooter, be sure to make sure that the robot is nice and smooth on the inside. Michigan has a four bar linkage arm system, which allows for game pieces when picked up off from the ground to stay parallel or horizontal throughout its climb, or actually when it's elevated up to a scoring position. They expanded on this feature by incorporating an elbow to make fine adjustments. Cranberry Alarm has an angled cascading elevator, so it's able to pivot horizontally as well as an angle to be able to allow their game pieces to their scoring positions as well followed by a cascading angled elevator that has no pivot it's in a fixed position. So it's able to successfully score in the same position each time. You may be thinking about using an extending arm to help pick up the game pieces and reach out to where the scoring position is. There's multiple robots doing that. Let's take a look at a few of them. First up, Bison Robotics. They have a tall structure with an elbow at the very top of it. So they reach their arm down, grab the game piece, lift it up, and then extend it out using a very unique method. They have two pieces of extrusion aluminum and using compliant wheels to extend the bottom portion out to the scoring area. Next, let's take a look at Pride of the North. They use a very low profile, meaning their center of gravity is going to be a bit lower. 
The pivot is in the center of the robot, so they're able to reach from behind them, grab the game piece, lift it up and over the robot 180 degrees and into a scoring position after extending. Next, let's look at the zookeepers. They also have a low profile, but they did a little bit differently. They're not able to extend the arm 180 degrees. Instead, they went with a counterbalance. What that means is that the motor is using the extending is counterbalancing the motor that is doing the tilting action. This means that there's less stress on that motor uh, in the center of the robot. Now, something to consider is with base layout of your chassis to incorporate some of the game change designs for this year. Take, for example, we have Bison Robotics. They have a U-shaped base which allows them to cinch closer to the nodes in order to use their arm in scoring positions. This allows them to have a closer center of gravity instead of outreaching from very far away with those barriers. In Walsing's Robotics blog, they incorporate a wedge which allows them to line up perfectly for scoring position with manipulating cones. They also provided a photo of an inverted wedge which helps them line up over the barriers, some teams may be able to incorporate both ideas to a single robot. This is something that was not explored with this first week in Robot in Three Days. If this is your first time ever building a robot, we suggest trying to build the kit chassis. In fact, if you are planning on getting on the charge station, it is better to build a robot with a long length but short width. That way you can fit as many robots on top as possible. University of Minnesota showed very well that the kit chassis is able to climb up onto the charge station no problem. Be sure to go check out this video by the first mentors in Michigan. They have a full two length hour video showing how to build that kit chassis. We'll put a link in the description to help you find it. Let's go ahead and hand it off to Mike to go over end game as well as programming features. We did see some teams experiment with Swerve Drive, including Pride of the North. It worked pretty well. You do see that they have some balancing things to work with. It's a little trickier to drive than just a standard tank drive. But again, coding could be key. To get on the charge station at the end can be tricky. Big Sky Robotics here shows us how manually driving can actually take a little bit of time. Last week we talked about PID loops. The P in PID stands for proportion. We saw a team actually implement that paradox. We saw they had some success, but it takes a little bit of time. We would recommend looking at what's a PD loop, which is proportion and derivative. That means that there's a time component where you're actually changing the the intensity of your drivetrain. Another FRC team, Sushi Squad, has actually perfected a pretty fast auto balancing, as you can see here. Aligning yourself on the field this year is easier than it's ever been. April tags are amazing. You can get some of these cameras off the shelf that will actually tell you location, orientation, and other information that's just really, really helpful. Sushi Squad also worked with that and used it for alignment. So as we mentioned earlier, you can use a wedge to auto-center yourself manually, or you could do the more programmatic approach. Both ways work and have pros and cons. Now let me send it back to Gabe and Barry for final thoughts. Mike just talked a little bit about programming and how to balance on the charge station, but I want to reiterate how important the autonomous score is. In a tiebreaker situation, it goes number of penalties, then charge station points, and then autonomous score to decide who wins the match before having to play a replay. When it comes to packaging your robot, you want to make sure that you incorporate some of the game features and barriers of this year. We also want to mention for a lot of these teams that, that was, that's going to incorporate where your robot's going to be in position for scoring, as well as where it's going to be on the charge station towards end game. All of this is important to consider when prototyping. And as we mentioned before, for rookie teams, one of the things that you want to try to work on is building a robot that is long and not wide. And also, if you can, try to get in autonomous mode because it's extremely important this year. If the best thing that you can do is score in the hybrid position, bottom of the field, do that during autonomous mode. When it comes to programming, you want to make sure that you have enough time for your programmers to do their thing. So, please follow our advice, build the kit bot as fast as possible, and give that to your programmers so they can go ahead and get started with all that programming. And also give your driver something to practice with. Drive time on the sticks is gonna be crucial this year. This is the best of what we were able to see within three days. Imagine what you can do with several weeks of practicing and building leading up to the competition. We know you all can do better. Good luck teams, we're looking forward to seeing you at the regionals.